Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Rewatch. So in this episode here, I want to talk about episodes 5 and 6 titled Chupacabra and Secrets. These are really great episodes. I think I preferred the last two to these two, but I do really like the ending of number 6 because that really sets up a lot of stuff for 7 and 8. And in 7 and 8, I really love those episodes, so I could see how around here that some fans maybe felt like it's a little slower. Because at this point, not a lot is happening when you compare it to season one, right? Season one, there's only six episodes. They do so much in those six episodes. In season two, we are now, I mean, after I talk about secrets, we're six episodes in, right? And not a lot has really happened. I mean, they went to the farm, you know, like they left the highway, the whole Sophia thing happened. But mostly just a lot of character development, a lot of drama happened. But for me, that is what I like, though. And I liked it back then. I wasn't bored at all. Like, that's... For me, when I watch a show, I like the characters. I like to just watch the characters and see how they act and react to certain situations, how they handle things, you know, and just really just learning more about all of these characters. I don't need constant action, like constantly having things happen in every episode. I still enjoy it. Maybe certain episodes aren't as great as others, but I'm not going to say those are bad episodes. That, that was just an episode, you know? You can't have this constant action all the time for something to be great, because sometimes it's just, sometimes you just need some downtime with some characters to, to work out something, to build to something writing-wise, right? So Chubacabra, which is episode five, starts off with the bombing of Alexandria, or Alexandria, <laughs> could you imagine it starts off that way? No, it started off with the bombing of Atlanta and I totally forgot this happened like I actually think when I watched this the first time like many years ago I don't think I ever saw this scene because it happened so early in the episode it's possible that I, I went somewhere and then I just came back and I just watched some, something that happened afterwards because I, I think for the first time ever watched the bombing of Atlanta just like three three four years ago or something like that like it, it was it was pretty recent. I don't think I watched that moment when it aired, but it's a pretty powerful moment because, you know, Lori is under the realization, same as Shane too, that Rick is probably gone. You know, they're bombing, napalming the streets and stuff like that. They're like, there's no way Rick is going to survive, which I do find a little weird. Like he did somehow survive all of that, but whatever. He was in a building up high. I mean, it makes sense. Not everything got destroyed, right? Like people were still around. One cool thing we learned, which I guess adds to the Daryl character, and it, it makes sense, is that he believes in Chupacabra, which is, I mean, it's, that's not the biggest surprise. And after a lot of disagreements and a lot of fighting, Rick and Shane actually do have some... They have a bonding moment in this episode. They talk about, you know, all the people that Shane was with and stuff like that. And they're laughing with, about that. And then things take a turn and then they talk about Sophia. And it's just that's an issue for them that they have a, a lot. Of, they have very different beliefs in because Rick's a father and will do anything for his son and anything for a child because he understands what Carol's going through as a parent. He wants to keep looking for Sophia. He doesn't want to stop Shane. You could argue because he doesn't have a kid. He could see things more realistically. But he says he's just doing the math. Sophia's gone. There's like we should just stop this and just like go to Fort Benning, basically. And Rick just gets really pissed off. And I mean, like that's what I really like about this moment here. And I think I've watched this so I've watched this scene so many times over the years. It's like you see why they're friends and you see like how that relationship works. And you know, it's a lot of fun. Rick and Shane are really awesome characters. The bond between them are, is a lot of fun. But when Sophia comes up and just, you know, the reason they're out there, that's where things get very heated because they both have different beliefs on that. And because they are trying to survive, it just it's that much worse. Right. So this is around the point here where we do start to see that. Yeah, Shane, he is starting to get very frustrated with the fact that they are still looking for her. It's been a few days, I don't know if it's been a week or so, or a week or two, I don't know how long it's been, but it's been a while for sure. He, he like, he's doing the math, and he's like, you know what, there's no way she's alive, so. Daryl falls on an arrow in this episode, and, yeah, you know what's funny about this? I actually thought he was gonna die. When I watched this years ago, I actually thought Daryl was gonna die in this scene here, but then he saw Merle, and the weird thing too is, when I watched this back then, I thought Merle was back. Like, I, I, the concept of, like, hallucination scenes and stuff like that was very new to me. I thought he was back, and I, I know it made no sense, and I remember thinking it was weird, but I thought, oh, I guess he's just back then, or something like that. Yeah, we got Merle back, though, in this episode, which is kind of cool, because we haven't seen him since episode three, I believe, of season one, not season two. Now, before they continued their search for Sophia, they all had this meeting, and then Jimmy went out with them, because Jimmy said that he got word from Herschel, and he was allowed to, which then Herschel gets pretty pissed off with, with Rick. I guess not too pissed, but he has a word with Rick, and he's like, you know what? You take care of your people, I'll take care of my people. It's just as simple as that. 
And this is around the point here. It's a turning point where now that Carl has been healed, Herschel sees no reason why they have to stay here. And he actually tells that to Lori, but we'll, we'll talk about that in episode six. The scene that absolutely shocked me and what made me not like Andrea as much anymore, but more switch to Daryl. Because remember, Andrea was like my favorite character from season one and early season two. I don't know why. I, I imagine she wasn't a lot of people's favorite character. You're, you're probably going to go with Rick or something like that or Shane. But for me, it was Andrea. I don't know why. I just really liked the character. And then in season two, she was absolutely great. You know, she's a very tough character. You know, like she wants she's a very tough character and she wants she wants to be treated like she's tough. She wants to be able to handle things on her own. And I really admire that about her. But she then shoots Daryl in the head and almost kills him. <laughs> like That really pissed me off. I, I couldn't believe how stupid she was for doing that. And I do get it. But like, I also don't get it because it was one like it, it might have been just one walker and she was going to do that. Like, I don't know. I think that was really dumb on her part. She should have thought things through a little bit more which kind of relates to things that, that Shane was saying in episode six, but we'll talk about that, in, I guess, when I get to that. The episode then ends with Shane deciding that he wants to make tough calls now. Like, he's going to start making some tough calls. And so, like, you can feel that things are starting to get... Things are going to get really bad here at the farm. Daryl's wounded, and Carol tells him that, you know, you're every bit as good as Shane and Rick, which I really like that she said that to him, because that must have been such a confidence booster for Daryl. He needed to hear that. Right. And I just I love that she said that. And then the episode ends with Glenn finding the barn full of walkers. And holy shit, what does this mean? You know, like this episode, not too much happened, but it kind of was like out of the whole season, I, I would say the more filler type of episode. But we had Merle come back, right? And then we get to the, the barn reveal at the end. And so let's talk about secrets. Secrets, it, it starts off with Carl. He's up and walking around now. And he's talking with Shane, and Shane's just a lot nicer to him now. He's not really being an asshole to him like he was before. Carl actually had a gun. Lori got pissed off about that. And I guess Rick and Shane kind of got annoyed. But Rick wanted him to have the gun, too. Like, Rick was saying, you know, he has to learn how to defend himself. Like, at least he's not afraid of weapons, right, after getting shot by one. So, Lori agrees, and that's basically what this episode is. It's, you know what, we're going to teach everyone to be able to handle a firearm, and we're going to teach Carl, Andrea, I mean, everybody wanted to learn, which was something that obviously Herschel didn't want, because Herschel didn't want guns on his farm. They went to a shooting range, but yeah, you know that annoyed Herschel for sure. I just love that scene. It's probably one of my favorite T-Dog scenes ever. I guess besides his like sacrifice and all that in season three, but it's when he holds the gun sideways and he, like Jimmy's holding the gun sideways and T-Dog's like, come on, man, don't give me some of that gangsta shit. Easily one of my favorite T-Dog moments of all time. Now, somehow Dale learned about the barn, I guess from Glenn and Dale just finds out everything and he finds out actually he's finding out everything from Glenn. So Dale goes to Herschel talks to him about the barn, and then you can tell this this annoys Herschel, and he hates the fact, like he says, that you know, it's unfortunate that you found that out, and now all of this drama is starting. Weirdly enough, I never thought that Sophia could be in there. I'm not going to talk about this too much, we'll talk about that in my next video for 7 and 8, but I never thought for a second that Sophia could be in there. I had no idea that she could be in there, and I mean, oh my god. It was Otis, right? Like, Otis did that, that's crazy. Herschel then tells Lori that with Carl getting better, you know, I, I guess you'll be, you guys will be leaving soon, which kind of shocked Lori a little bit. Like, what, were you, like, you're expecting us to leave now that Carl's getting better? which lines up with what I was saying before in my episode five, uh, I guess, review, was that Herschel at this point is getting very annoyed because now they're using guns. And yeah, they went to uh, a safer spot to do that. They took Jimmy, but they're still kind of doing something like and he And he's just, you know, that, that annoys him. Carl's all fixed and better, but they're still here because these are strangers that just came to his farm. Herschel wants to look after his own family, not these people here. He doesn't want anything to do with them because Herschel is still under the belief that things are going to get better. We shouldn't be killing these people because they're actual people. Yeah, they're turning to like these walkers, but they're just sick. We can help them. Shane teaches Andrea how to shoot, and that was the most insane thing ever. I mean, the thing about Shane and how hot-headed he is, he is so right about everything. It's just that he's so intense about all of it. Like, for me anyways, I can see how his, his mind is operating, you know, like that is how I am with things like that. I am very harsh on myself, you know, in working out and stuff like that, you know, doing anything like that. I, I am very like, I will think of the worst things ever to, to pump me up, to work out, to get stronger. You know, Shane does that here. He brings up Amy's death to Andrea. Andrea is shooting this log 
And Shane says something like, is that the walker that killed Amy or, or something like that? And she looks at him like she's so shocked. But for me, I can see what's going on in Shane's head because you, you want to you want to be able to master that level of intensity in a moment like that. You want to use that anger and stuff to, to do something, you know, to just to be confident to do it, to achieve that and take out your frustrations on something like that. Shane can get a little crazy. I know that. And it's different saying it to someone else. You know, it's, it's one thing to think about it on your own, but to treat someone else like that, it's definitely, he was, he was definitely being an asshole there. But that's the thing with Shane. That's kind of the story of it. And that's something that we'll talk about when we get to ep- or season five and six and stuff is that mostly five, I guess, four and mostly, yeah, mostly five was that Rick became Shane, but Rick was right. So was Shane right? And you know what? As we're going through season two, I do think Shane was right. Like, this was stuff that they started to do later on. It's just sadly Rick and them never realized it on, on time. And so Shane died. Shane was trying to kill Rick. So it's a little different. But Dale then finds out about Lori's pregnancy because, again, Dale just finds everything out. And, and you know, Glenn apologizes for it. But, yeah, Dale is just, I don't know. He just knows everything. <laughs> like, he just, he just knows all. He observes everyone. Like, he literally observes everyone's actions and he's a good listener. You know, that's a, that's, a, that's a beneficial skill for him. This was also the episode where we start to see Maggie really starting to push Glenn into, into, I guess, having a little more respect for himself. You know, don't go for these supply runs. Don't put yourself in danger for these people. Have a little more respect for yourself. Be, you know, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. I think that actually helped Glenn a lot. He still did things, but it's because he wanted to. But you, you, like you can see during the prison arc, especially season three, four, and five, he, he really grew a lot. And I do think he grew a lot because of Maggie. I know he got less screen time later on because the cast got bigger. And I, I still feel really I, like I hate that so much. But Maggie was right here. You know, like I, I really like the fact that he, he would help out a lot. But Glenn put himself in very dangerous situations. He's like the hero, right? He saved Rick. He's saving everybody. But... Like he's, he's, he's almost killing himself doing this sometimes. Speaking of Dale again, he confronts Shane and he wants him to leave and then tensions rise and then Shane threatens Dale. Also in this episode, Shane and Andrea got it on and I'm just wondering if Dale was watching and so that's why he got that intense or maybe he just knew. I don't know what it was, but obviously I know he wasn't watching, but then again, you never know with Dale. He just seemed so jealous when, when Shane and Andrea came out of that car. There was just something there where he got He just got so jealous because in the comic, Dale and Andrea kind of have a thing a little bit. And I think they're playing with that here where Dale, like he does care for Andrea. I don't know if it's really relationship like it's kind of a little bit, but it is more father daughter than anything. It's a weird relationship. It's just I think it's the way Dale is, though. Dale kind of treats Andrea like, oh, maybe he's in love with her. But then he does very fatherly things, right? So I don't know. It, it, that's the, it's just a weird relationship. And here he seemed to get really annoyed about it. And Shane just got pissed off about that. Like, Shane just said to Dale, like, what, like, you want me to leave? He starts bringing up some stuff with Otis, which is where we first start to hear the idea that maybe Shane isn't telling the truth about Otis. And obviously it's Dale. He's got to be the guy to to be suspicious about that, right? Which is, I mean, it's Dale. Rick finds Lori's pregnancy test. And this just, I mean, he's pissed off because he also finds some pills there. And he's just like really mad. Like, you didn't tell me about this. And he, he gets so mad. He's like, what, you think I would, I'd make you have a baby that you didn't want to have? I, he was just really mad that, that he, Lori never told him about all that, that, he, that she was going to do this to the baby. And he was never going to know sort of thing. Like, it's such a big decision. All he wanted to do was know if she didn't want it. Fine, you know, like, that's totally fine. And so they get into this whole screaming fight. And then, yeah, he just he finally bl- like just blew up on her, which is something that I think needed to be done from Rick. Because up until now, he's just been so nice to Lori. It, like, it's just he's too nice to Lori. He got annoyed a little bit about her suggesting that maybe Carl could die, or should die anyways, because of the apocalypse and stuff. There's just been a lot of things that have just been building up in Rick's head. He finds this, and it's just like one thing after another, and he just finally blows up on Lori. Which I actually think it wasn't really the whole pregnancy thing. It wasn't all of that. It was what they talked about after that which was that, yeah, she was, she was with Shane 
beforehand because Rick knew and, and Rick just questioned us like you were with Shane right or he didn't say it like that I can't remember exactly how they said it but Lori confessed and Rick was like you know what like I already knew of like of course I knew right and Rick just handled everything really well it just shows how great of a person he is right like Lori didn't want to have the baby and if she was going to go through with that he was very supportive of that he was just more mad that he didn't know anything and then with, with the Shane thing you know he was a little more understanding about it like this guy can really take huge things like that and and really process them really well because i don't know he just knows how to handle stress like that but this was a big moment though in the Lori, rick and shane drama now rick knows that Lori's pregnant shane doesn't know yet so that's going to be interesting when we get to that but now rick knows of everything and so now i can't wait to see what's going to happen when rick and shane talk again because that's going to be very different like yeah rick can forgive Lori for that but Rick, I don't know if he can really forgive Shane for that. And this is where things are going to start taking a dark turn. And this was episode six. We have, I think, well, we have seven more episodes left of this season. I have three more episodes of rewatch coming out before we take a break for a little bit. But yeah, I mean, this episode five and six were really, really great episodes. I, I really enjoyed these episodes. Five, I, I guess you could say was more of the filler. Six, a lot of stuff actually happened in here. It really did build up to some stuff. But seven and eight is where it's at. And I I, I just, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess you guys will see it tomorrow, right? We're going to be going through these pretty fast right now. So post all your thoughts down below. I was going to do a Q&A for this, but for some of them, I'm not going to do Q&As just because I want to try to get through these ones really fast. But when I get back to doing them weekly, then I will do Q&A just because it's easier. But I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Post all your thoughts down below on episodes five and six of season two of The Walking Dead. And I'll see you guys in the next one.